Hello again, YouTubers and Card Fight fans. 24 7 here again for Card Fight 24 7 with a Card Fight Vanguard tournament report brought to you by Toy Game and Emporium. Com. As I preluded in my previous video, the deck profile of Spike Brothers, um, I just had my pre-regional qualifier locally. Um, I live in Wisconsin. Both, we only have two regional qualifiers in the whole state, and both were on the same day, the 16th. So basically, unless I want to travel like four to five hours or more to regional qualifier, this was my only shot to attempt to qualify for regionals. And the store is only about a 15 minute drive from my house, so for the only location I can go to, at least it's conveniently located, but again, the only chance I have. So I'll go through my rounds here and let you know how I did. So we had 19 players, and if you don't know, the pre regional qualifiers are best of one and double elimination. So it's not best of three, it's just the first one to get. Six damage to your opponent, or make your opponent deck out, which very rarely happens, etc. Wins the round, and continues on, and you play until you lose twice. So the last two people left are the two people that qualify for regionals. You have to get top two to qualify for regionals. So, I was of course playing Spike Brothers, I have a, a, a layout here, a fairly ideal one. Not a perfect one, but you know, just a give you an idea of how the field may look at some points. But anyways, first round I faced Angel Feather. Um, I've only played against an Angel Feather's deck I think once previously. Uh, uh, match was going well for me. I was at three damage, similar to how you see here. Um, and of course for my Deadly Emperor I need four damage so I can limit break and use his ability. So my opponent was attacking me. He's down to his final attack with his grade three Vanguard. I'm at three damage, like okay, I'll let go. It will hit, obviously, then, so I can upbreak next turn. Well, he reveals his trigger checks. Critical. Critical. I flip over three damage. No heals. Game over. I lose round number one. But wait! The turn organizer then has exchange decks and count each other's decks to make sure we had 50 cards. I count his deck. One, two, three, da, da, da. 51. I count again. One, two, three, da, 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 49, 50. 51. And then make piles of five. You know, I go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And I put 10 piles of five plus a starting vanguard for a total of 51. So I'm like, um, Terminal Organizer, uh, his deck's got 51 cards. So then he has to uh, look up some rules and stuff and that. And basically, the end result is my opponent gets the loss and I get the win because he had an illegal deck. So I went from being like, oh wow. First round, double critical. Wow, this is going to be a crappy day, duh. Wow, my point at 51 cards, I win! Hooray! So that was quite a roller coaster for just round one for me. So, at the end of all that, I'm 1 0. I move on to the second round. And um, by the way, there were, like I said, there were 19 players. And with the double nation format, they make some weird brackets to make it all work. Um, I was one of six players out of the 19 to play round one. 13 players had round two. So if you're familiar to, uh, with March Madness, the N64 tournament, or the 64 team tournament, with, which has play-in games now, it's kind of like that, where you got to win the first round just to get into the actual tournament, or whatever you want to say. Kind of like that. But again, double elimination, so you're not out if you lose round one. But anyways, so I move on to what then becomes a bracket of 16, essentially. And I'm one of three players that are 1-0 at that point. But anyways, round two, I face a Dark Irregulars deck from someone who traveled like five hours to get to this regional qualifier, which was his closest, I guess. Um, it's actually the first time I played against Dark Irregulars, so I'm actually not fully sure like the ideal function of the deck. But for the majority of the game, I think he only did one or at most two attacks each turn to me. I don't think he ever was able to do three attacks in a single turn. So although he didn't miss any Grave Rides or anything, it seemed like a pretty standard game for me on my side and it was a pretty smooth victory for me so I win that round so I win my first two go to round three and I face a uh, Narukami deck uh, I lost Mecha Trainer early in the game because of their starting Vanguard's ability but not that big a deal because I figure if I'm blocking to save my Mecha Trainer I'm using up more resources than what Mecha Trainer ultimately nets me so I figure I'm best off to just let them do their ability and get rid of Mecha Trainer and go on from there. 
Um, game goes pretty well for me. I don't miss any grade rides or anything like that. Um, I'm able to get off my limit break in a pretty timely fashion, and I do my six damage to my opponent, but it's a heal trigger, so they survive that turn. So their turn, I then have to withstand all their attacks, but I managed to do so to get back to my turn, and I end up hitting for hitting five times with Juggernaut, Juggernaut, Emperor, and then I get the Juggernauts back out again, and I ultimately win that game after thinking I've won, thinking I've lost, and then ultimately winning. So I win my first three rounds, and this all starts with an opponent having a 51-card deck. Round four, I face another Angel Feather deck. Their version relies heavily on cards with the ability that if when a card goes to your damage zone, they get plus 2,000, which works on both players' turns. However, this particular opponent, they missed their grade one ride for, I think it was just one turn, but regardless, that's pretty devastating and made the match fairly easy for me, and I cruised to another victory. So, I'm 4-0, go to the fifth round, and now me and my opponent are the last two undefeateds left in the field of 19 players. Whoever wins this match is guaranteed top two, and whoever loses will have to make it through the loser's bracket and win that to be guaranteed top two. So... Whoever wins this is guaranteed an invite to regionals. And I'm facing MLB, Majesty Lord Blaster. Um, details of this match are a bit foggy for me, but I know th I'm know i pretty sure throughout the game he wasn't able to have MLB fully powered, wasn't able to get Blaster Dark and Blaster Blade into the soul, so he wasn't hitting for the extra critical in that. Um, it was a very close match, but in the end, I pulled it off and I got the W, and I'm the last undefeated left, so I'm guaranteed top two and invite to regionals, which my proof right here. There's my sheet. There's my shop qualifier badge. This is what I got to take with me to the regional to verify that I qualified and all that. So yes, I am one of the players that qualified for regionals. Um, I checked the website and I counted 277 qualifiers and 25 regionals. That'll break down to about 11 qualifiers per regional, which would mean about 22 players per regional. However, for example, Hawaii, which is always kind of, kind of standalone thing, they have four qualifiers in one regional, so I assume their regional have eight players. So I'm going to assume, for the sake of better brackets, that most regionals will have 24 players. So I'll be of one, one of roughly 24 players at the regional. Either I'll be going to St. Paul, Minnesota on, I think it's April 12th, if that's the Saturday. Maybe it's the 13th. I think it's the 13th. So you're April 13th in St. Paul or April 20th in Northern Illinois. Bushy Road should be contacting me let me know where I'll be playing. So if you made a regional, if you qualified for regionals and you'll be going to Minnesota or Illinois, you might just see me there. But anyways, like so I got the invite, but did I win the whole tournament is the question. Well, after I won that last round of the winner's bracket, I then had to wait about 90 minutes for the loser's bracket to play out. The guy I played against had to wait about an hour because he basically got like the last spot in the loser's bracket, so he played like the winner of the rest of the loser's bracket. It's kind of confusing. Um, if I remember, I'll try to put in a picture right now and when I edit this video that shows the bracket so you get an idea because I took a picture of it because they were doing a marker board so everyone could kind of follow along better. So I'll try that on the screen so you can kind of see and make heads or tail out of it. My name is Jeff, Jeff W. I'm near the upper left corner of the bracket, so you can see me there and kind of follow along my name on there. Um, so yeah, about 90 minutes later, I face the winner of the loser's bracket, which ends up being the guy I beat in the last round of the winner's bracket. So I face MLB again. For him to get first place, he has to beat me twice in a row. For me to get first place, I have to win one out of two, basically. So... Um, the first match we do then, the early game is kind of foggy for me, but I know towards the end, um, I basically, so this side, they're all attacked, they're all tapped, whatever. And at this point then, so I got one attack left, and I know I have a Brack in my hand, and I think maybe a, a trigger or something, but he's got Majesty Lord Blaster with ability as his vanguard, so he's at 12,000, and he's got a 9k grade 2 interceptor and no hand left at this point. So, if I just do Skydiver for 11,000 at his Vanguard, it's not enough, he's 12,000. So, 
Um, I could, with that, just hit the rear guard, but he's at four damage. So I want a chance to win the game on this turn. So for me to do that, I have to hit for 18 at the vanguard. He can't block because that's 6,000 more than his vanguard, which he can't intercept that then. So that's his fifth damage. I then put Skydiver into the soul and play Bracky. However, 9k, not if hit his vanguard. If I boost him to 14 gig, I can hit the vanguard, but he can then intercept, which would put to care of his interceptor, but Bracky would also have to go back to the deck. So I, won't, I can't get to the six damage, so I just do the 9k at his rear guard, so that way Bracky stays in the field. Uh, if I play it back in my head multiple times, and if I remember it correctly, I don't think there's anything else I could have done differently that turn to get him to six damage, but did the best moves I possibly could to best my chances. But the next turn, I'm not able to withstand his attacks, so I do end up losing that game. So we go to game two of the finals, which no matter what, it's the final match of the day for anybody. Um, let's see, so for this game, I can't remember who goes first, but I know my strategy for this time, just to reduce the chance, which I probably should have done my other games. His strategy Vanguard is Wingle Brave. When it boosts and attack hits, he can then, I believe, Wingo Brave goes to the soul, I think. I can't remember exactly, soul or discard or whatever, but bottom line is he gets to search his deck for a card named Blaster, with Blaster in his name added to his hand. So, um, it's like, well, I better block all of his attacks with Wingo Brave boosting to reduce his chances of riding how he wants. So, I believe it was two attacks in a row I blocked with Wingo Brave boosting, and this led to him not having a grade two at all, and he was not able to ride a grade two for a turn. So that set him back greatly. It was still a close match, but that gave me the edge I needed, and I pulled it out. So I ended up going six and one on the day, the only player not to lose twice, and thus I was first place at my regional qualifier. And as you already saw then, I'll be going to regionals, and there is my badge and all that good stuff. And again, this is with Spike Brothers, obviously, and I'm just using, I'm running three Dudley Emperors, three Juggernauts, and two Skydivers. Um, I will, before regionals, I'll for sure have a fourth Juggernaut, so I can go four Juggernaut, four Emperor. Spoiler alert for those who may be going to the Minnesota regionals, but I don't care if you know what I'm playing. I don't think it matters that much. But yeah. And also I got the cool Kai deck box, which is a participation prize. But I think we only got six at our store. And online it's a 20, first 24 register get one, so not sure what's up with that, but I got one for first place as well. Top six, I think, got them. That's what it was. So that's the tournament report. I'm going to regionals. I'll be for sure do a regional, a regional tournament report as well for you guys, let you know how I did and if I happen to qualify for the nationals, which is June 2nd, but the, the uh, location is still to be determined, still to be announced. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so yeah, that will do it for this tournament report. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a big thumbs up. We'll do more deck profiles and more box openings going forward. And I'll try to start getting some matches recorded as well. Check out Toy Game and Emporium.com for all of your card fight vanguard and our toy and gaming needs. You can find a link to our blog and our Facebook page in the video description box below. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.